May I inquire, Mr. Cratchit, what you're doing with that shovel full of coal? Why, I beg your pardon, sir, but the outer office is intensely cold, and my fire... Dear, dear, your fire! I should have said your fire, sir. Yes, sir. It shows symptoms of going out, and I thought I might venture to replenish it with a small quantity of coal. Yes. Well, of course, you know, it's very evident to me, you know, Mr. Cratchit, that you and I have to part. Oh, oh I see no El Porridge, sir. You don't pay for the coal, so you can afford to be reckless. It's therefore very evident to me, sir, you know, that my interest is not your interest. Nor my welfare, your welfare. Get on with your work, sir. That'll keep you warm up. I'm not cold. Why should you be? And I'm your senior. <coughs> By a great many years, I fancy. about a small shovel full of coal. None of your mumbling, you know, none of your mumbling. You, you have a wife and family to support, I understand. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How many children have you got? Around half dozen, sir. Three boys and three girls. Da, da, da. Can I afford a wife? Yes, sir. Hey? Uh, I mean, no, sir. Have I any children? I don't know, sir. Eh? No. No, sir. How much am I constrained to pay you a week for your services? Fifteen shillings, sir. Eh. Be to your interest, sir, to see that you're worth it. consent to open their shut hearts freely. And therefore, though it's never put a scrap of gold or silver in my pocket, I believe it has done me good and will do me good. And I say, God bless it. Here I go. Here I go. Mr. Cratchit, if I hear another word from you, you'll keep your Christmas by losing your situation. Dear, 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 dear. Quite a powerful speaker, sir. I wonder you don't go into Parliament. Don't be angry, Uncle. Come, dine with us tomorrow. I'll see you. But why? Why? Why did you get married? Because I fell in love. Because I fell in... Good evening. You never came to see it before, that happened. Why give that as a reason for not coming now? Good evening, sir. But I want nothing from you. I ask nothing of you. Well, you won't get it, so you won't be disappointed, will you? We've never had a quarrel to which I've been party. So why not let us part friends? Good evening, sir. Well, I'm sorry with all the heart to find this around you. I've made the trial and homage to Christmas, and I'll keep my Christmas humor to the last. So a Merry Christmas, Uncle. Good evening, sir. And a Happy New Year. You're a noisy devil. That's what you are, sir. Merry Christmas, Bob Gretchen. And the same to you, sir, and many of them. And not forgetting your good lady, Mitty Fred. Thank you, Gretchen. A Merry Christmas to you. A Merry Christmas.
ready and willing to quit your work, I notice. <laughs> it's seven o'clock, sir. That clock's fast. By the way, I... I suppose you'll want all day off tomorrow, eh? Well, sir, if, if, if it's quite convenient... It isn't convenient. It isn't fair. If I were to stop half a crown for it, oh, you'd be mightily ill-used. I'd be bound, wouldn't you? Don't think I'm ill-used, do you? When I have to pay a whole day's wages. No work. It only happens once a year, sir. That's a pretty excuse for picking a man's pocket every 25th of December. Well, I... I suppose you've got to have it. Yeah, there's the key. You see, sir, that you're here all the earlier next morning. Good night, sir, and a Merry Christmas. Ah, I'm now, or will you let the ladies and gentlemen continue to enjoy themselves? Call silence for the loyal toast. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, pray silence for the Right Honourable, the Lord Mayor of London. My lord. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, her most gracious majesty, the queen.
Look, Ebenezer Scrooge, for only you can see me. Don't trick me. Much. <laughs> In life, I was your partner, Jacob Marley. In life? Why do you trouble? It is required of everyone that the spirit within him roared among his fellow men. And if that spirit goes not forth in life, it is condemned to do so after death. My is beyond the narrow limits of our money-changing home. So I cannot rest. I cannot stay. Anger anywhere. You are bitter. Why? I wear the chain I forged in life. I made it, link by link. Would you know the weight and length of the coil you bear yourself? Speak words of comfort to me, Jacob Marley. Speak words of comfort. Comfort? I have none to give. I am here to warn you, to save you, if that be possible. To warn. To save me. From what? From such a fate as mine. To wander through the world and witness what I cannot share, but might have shared on earth and turn to happiness. But you were always a good man of business, Jacob. Business. Mankind would have been my business. Charity, forbearance, benevolence. All were my business, as they should be yours. Now heed me, for my time is short. You will be haunted by three spirits. Without their visit, you cannot hope to shun the path I tread. You shall behold the visions of a Christmas past, a Christmas present, and a Christmas yet to come. Expect the first when the clock strikes midnight tonight. Molly! Look to see me no more. Molly! The money is due and must be paid. But, sir, that's impossible. Then I shall have no alternative but to take immediate steps to recover it. But, sir, you must see that if... That is the way I conduct my business. 
You don't mean sell us up? That is precisely what I do mean. But, sir, I couldn't work in the hospital. Mr. Stewart, I beg of you. Today. You can't do this. You can't be so unjust. Give us a little more time. A week. Please. sentiment to enter this counting house. I should be in the bankruptcy court within a year. And as for that couple who've just gone out, well, set your mind at rest about them. Worthless, shiftless pair. Had my good money. Now I want to avoid paying it back. Your money. Your good money. We asked you for a little breathing space, a little time in which to pay. That's all. Enough of this, Bill. I'm ready to make allowances for your feelings as a woman. But I must ask you to leave my business affairs alone. When you marry me, I shall insist. You take leave of your senses. I've tried hard not to believe what they said about you. I'd give you anything not to believe it now. But the evidence of my own eyes and ears, I must believe. You are not all this And I can see now that one passion and one passion only engrosses you. What then, even if it were so, I'm not changed towards you? You are changed. Changed in every way. You're not the man. Our contract's an old one, made when we were poor and content to be so. May we happy, alone, in the life you've chosen. this afternoon. Oh, who was it? You guess. How can I? I don't know. It wasn't Mr. Scrooge. Mr. Scrooge it was. I passed his office window, and as it was not shut up and there was a candle inside, I could scarcely help see him. His partner's on, on the point of death, I hear. And there he sat, alone. Quite alone in the world, I do believe. Spirit, I cannot bear it. Haunt me no more. I told you these were the shadows of the things that have been, that they are what they are. Do not blame me. Take me back. Clock, I know it is.
gentlemen, and know me, better man. I am the ghost of Christmas present. Look upon me. You have never seen the like of me before. Never. I've never walked forth with the younger members of my family, meaning I am very young. My elder brothers, born in those later years. I don't think I have. I'm afraid I have not. Have you many brothers, Spirit? More than 1,800. A tremendous family to provide for. Spirit, conduct me where you will. Already I have been forth under compulsion and learned a lesson which is working now. If you have aught to teach me, let me profit by it. Touch my robe. And you shall see how you are poor clerk with his paltry 15 shillings a week, which you so grudgingly dole out to him, keeps Christmas. Touch my robe. Up you get tiny, Tim. Yes, 
growing strong and hearty. I wish I could believe you, Bob. But I'm afraid. We are about to receive. May the Lord make us truly thankful. <laughs> and its favor will I know to pass my utmost expectations. Yes! With the mashed potatoes and the apple sauce, oh! it will I am sure present a delightful combination that we shall remember until our dying day. Yes! The best goose we ever had, Mother. Yes, indeed. Oh, yes. Mm. Oh, I've eaten too much. <laughs> and even now, we haven't eaten at all. <laughs> you laugh. Laugh. I envy them. Spirit. Tell me the tiny Tim will live? I see a vacant seat in the poor chimney corner with a crutch without an owner carefully preserved. If these shadows remain unaltered in the future, the child will die. Oh, tell me that he'll be spared. If he is like to die, had he not better do it and decrease the surplus population I give you a toast. I give you Mrs. Scrooge, the founder of the feast. The founder of the feast, indeed. I wish I had him here. I'd give him a piece of my mind to feast upon. I hope he'd have a good appetite for it. But, my dear, the children, Christmas Day. It should be Christmas Day, I'm sure, on which one drinks the help of such an odious, stingy, hard, unfeeling man as Mr. Scrooge. You know he is, Robert. Nobody knows him better than you do, poor fellow. My dear, Christmas Day. Well, I'll drink his health for your sake and the day's, not his. He'll be very merry and very happy, I've no doubt. Here of Mr. Scrooge's health. Now, children, all together, Mr. Scrooge's health. Mr. Mr. Scrooge's, Scrooge's health. health. Mr. Scrooge's health. And now, Tiny Tim will sing to us. Yes, yes, I, I do. do sing. What shall I sing? Hark the Herald Angels. Yes, yes, Hark the yes. Herald Angels. Hark the Herald Angels singing glory to the newborn King. Peace on earth and mercy my Come now and see how others keep Christmas. the future, I fear you more than any specter I have seen. You are about to show me shadows of the things that have not been, but will be in the time to come. And as I hope to live to be another man from what I was, I am prepared to bear you. Ah, 
I don't know much about it either way. I only know he's dead. When did he die? Last night, I believe. Why, what was the matter with him? I thought he'd never die. <laughs> <laughs> Heaven knows. What's he done with his money? Left it to his company, perhaps. He hasn't left it to me. That's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> how are you? Very well, how are you? So old Nick has got his own at last. It's so I'm told. <laughs> cold, isn't it? Seasonable for Christmas time. Oh, yes. You're not a skater, I oh, oh, no, no. I've got something else to think about. <laughs> I do not see myself in my accustomed place. Where am I? Why am I not there? staring as if you were afraid, woman. Who's the worst for the loss of a few things like this? Not a dead man, I suppose. Open this bundle, old Joe, and let me know the value of it. I ain't afraid to be the first, nor afraid for them to see it. Now mine, Joe. Ah. Eight shillings. I always give too much to ladies. It's a weakness of mine. <laughs> and now unto my bundle, Joe. Don't mean to say you took him down, rings and all, with him lying there. Why not? You was born to make your fortune, <laughs> and you will certainly do it. Here, <laughs> yeah, don't drop the oil on my blanket. His blanket? Who else is? He's likely to take cold without them, I dare say. <laughs> hope he didn't die of anything catching. Oh, don't you be afraid of that. Ah, you can look through that shirt until your eyes ache and you won't find a hole in it. It's the best he had. It would have been wasted if it hadn't been for me. What do you call wasting of it? Putting it on him to be buried in, to be sure. I took it off him. <laughs> <laughs> Calico's just as for coming to the body. <laughs> he couldn't have looked uglier than he did in that one. <laughs> 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 This is the end of it, you see. He frightened everyone away from him when he was alive to profit us when he was dead. I see, I see. The case of this unhappy man might be my own. My life tends that way now. Merciful heavens, what is that? This is the man they spoke of. Neglected. Robbed. Hated. Can you not show me some tenderness connected with death?
my little child. Tiny Tim, thy childish essence was from God. I met Mr. Scrooge's nephew today, and he said to me, I'm heartily sorry for you, Mr. Cratchit, and heartily sorry for your good wife. Oh, how he knew that, I don't know. Knew what, my dear? Why, that you were a good wife. Everybody knows that. <laughs> well observed, my boy. Hmm. And he said, if there's any service that I can do for you, pray come to me. It almost seemed as though he had known our tiny Tim and felt with us. And I'm sure we shall none of us forget him, nor this first parting that has been among us. Never, Father. And I know that when we recollect how patient and how mild he was, although he was but a little child, we shall not quarrel easily among ourselves and forget poor Tiny Tim in doing it. Never, I'm very happy. Very happy. Now, Spirit, tell me what man that was whom we saw lying dead. to the stone at which you point. Tell me, are these the shadows of the things that will be? Or are they the shadows of the things that may be only? Heaven and Christmas time be praised for this. I thank you. 
my knees. I thank you, Jacob. On my knees. Oh. Oh. They're not torn down. They're not torn down. Ah! Master in, my dear. Yes, sir. Can I see him, my love? He's in the dining room, sir. I'll show you in. He knows me. He knows me. Fred. Bless my soul, who's this? It is I, your Uncle Scrooge. I've come to dinner. Will you let me in, Fred? Why, it's Uncle Scrooge. It can't be. Will I? A Merry Christmas to you, Uncle. Come in. Come in and join us. Welcome, Uncle. And a Merry Christmas. Thank you, my dear. A Merry Christmas to you all. A Merry Christmas.
Bob. It's nearly nine o'clock. You promised Mr. Scrooge you'll be earlier than usual this morning. <laughs> so I did, so I did. <laughs> I am behind my time. I think you are, sir. I think you are. There's only one thing here, sir. It shan't be repeated. I was making rather merry yesterday, sir. So I tell you what it is, my fine fellow. I'm not going to stand it any longer. And therefore, therefore, I'm so going to raise your salary. Never more serious in all this life, Bob. I'm going to raise his salary, and as for signing things, I'll be a second father to him. Oh, gosh, he's dead. No more work today, Bob. No work today. Make haste your family, Bob. They've been wanting it today, Bob. They've been wanting it today. A merry Christmas, Bob. A merry Christmas. My good fellow and I have given you for many a year. Go on now. Go on! Merry Christmas to all of us. Happy New Year to everyone. God bless us all. Bless us everyone. Oh. 
Gilbert K. Chesterton once said, in everybody there is a thing that loves children, fears death, and likes sunlight. And this thing enjoys Charles Dickens. Before I tell you about the Christmas Carol, let me read to you what Charles Dickens himself wrote about this story. I have endeavored in this ghostly little story to raise the ghost of an idea which shall not put my readers out of humor with themselves, with each other, with the season, or with me. May it haunt their houses pleasantly. Charles Dickens. To begin with, Jacob Marley was dead. Did Scrooge know that he was dead? Of course he did. Ebenezer Scrooge and he had been partners for I don't know how many years. Scrooge never painted out Marley's name. And so there it stood seven years afterwards above the warehouse door. Ebenezer Scrooge. Oh, but he was a tight-fisted old sinner, hard and sharp as flint. The cold within him froze his features because he always carried his own low temperature with him. And he didn't thaw one degree, not even at Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Uncle. God save you. Christmas. Humbug. Christmas, a humbug? Uncle, you don't mean that, I'm sure. What reason have you to be merry? You're poor enough. What right have you to be dismal? You're rich enough. Humbug. What's Christmas to you but a time for finding yourself a year older but not an hour richer? Every idiot that goes about with Merry Christmas on his lips should be boiled in his own pudding. Now, Uncle, I know you... Now, don't. you keep Christmas in your own way, Fred, and I keep it in mine. Be off now. This is a place of business. Well, don't be angry. Come dine with us tomorrow. No. Caroline will be happy to see you. Why did you ever get married? Because I fell in love. Love? <laughs> That's the only thing in the world more ridiculous than a Merry Christmas. Good afternoon, nephew. Uncle, I'm sorry with all my heart to find you like this. Uh, Merry Christmas, Bob. Merry Christmas, sir. Let me hear another sound from you. You'll keep your Christmas by losing your situation. <coughs> You'll, uh, you'll want all day tomorrow, I suppose, question. Quite convenient, sir. It's not convenient. But it's only one day in the year, sir. A poor excuse to pick the pocket of your employer every 25th of December. But be here all the earlier next morning. I will, sir. And a Merry Christmas to you, Mr. Scrooge. Ah. Christmas. Nonsense. Humbug. And while most of London was jovial and full of glee in honor of this Christmas Eve, Scrooge had taken his melancholy dinner at his usual melancholy tavern. And having read all the newspapers, he went home to bed. Scrooge lived in the chambers which had once belonged to Marley, his ex-partner. And as I have remarked before, Marley is dead these last seven years. Dead as a doornail.
Ebenezer Scrooge. How oh, now? What do you want of me? Much. Who are you? Life, I was your partner, Jacob Marley. You don't believe in me? I, I don't. What evidence would you have of my reality beyond that of your own senses? I don't know. Then why doubt your senses? Because a slight disorder in my stomach could make my senses cheat me. You might be an undigested bit of beef, a blot of mustard, a fragment of underdone potato. Humbug, I tell you, humbug! <laughs> Mercy on me, dreadful apparition. Now, do you believe in me or not? I do, I do. But why do you come to plague me? And why do you wear that ponderous chain? I made it link by link in my life, as you are doing for yourself on earth. <sighs> it is now a part of my penance, and I am here tonight to warn you of a fate such as mine. But, Ebenezer, if you change your ways, you have a chance of escaping my doom. You were always a good friend to me, Jacob. Thank you. Thank you. You will be haunted by three spirits. Without their visits, you cannot hope to shun the path I tread. Expect the first tomorrow, when the bell tolls once. Expect the next on the following night at the same hour and the third on the next night when the last stroke of twelve has ceased to vibrate. Couldn't I take them all at once, Jacob, and have it over with? Look to see me no more and look to for your own sake. You remember what has passed between us. <laughs> Scrooge tried desperately to say humbug to the strange happening, but the word stuck in his throat, unuttered. For it was highly probable it was not humbug. Being very much in need of repose from the experience he had undergone, or shall I say, fatigues of the day, he went straight to bed without undressing and fell asleep in an instant. A few hours later, coming was foretold to me? I am. Who and what are you? I am the ghost of Christmas past. Long past? No. Your past. What business brings you here? Your welfare. I have things to show you, which are the shadow of the things that have been. Right. Most of Christmas past led Scrooge down the road which he had forgotten for so many years. He showed him a Christmas day in the past, which was a happy one for most children, but not for one lonely schoolboy. Ebenezer Scrooge, do you know that boy? Yes, yes, 
I do. It is I as a boy. Oh, I remember that Christmas well. I felt so lonely. My playmates, they didn't like me. It was because you had shunned them? I wish... What is the matter? There was a boy singing a Christmas carol on the street last night. I should have liked to have given him something, that's all. Shall I show you another Christmas, 40 years ago, when a fair young girl released you from your marriage contract? No, no! Because she discovered you had ceased to love her. Your greed, avarice, and desire for wealth had killed the love she had for you. No, no, spirit, show me no more. Leave me, haunt me no longer. Awakening in the middle of a prodigiously tough snore and sitting up in bed to get his thoughts together, Scrooge had no occasion to be told that the bell was again upon the stroke of one. Christmas presents, look upon me. Yes, spirit, conduct me where you will. I went forth last night on compulsion, and I learned a lesson which is working now. Tonight, if you have aught to teach me, let me profit by it. Touch my robe. This is the house of your clerk, Bob Cratchit. But he has hardly a penny to his name. I, the ghost of Christmas present, have blessed his house. Here comes Bob now with another member of his family, Tiny Tim. And a Merry Christmas, everybody. And there you are, Tiny Tim. Right in your own chair. Merry Christmas, Bob. And Martha. <laughs> yes, here I am again. Christmas wouldn't be Christmas without Martha coming to visit us. And how did Tiny Tim behave today, Bob? Fine. He told me coming home that he was glad he'd been to church, because it's pleasant to remember that the day is called Christmas, after he who made the lame to walk and the blind to see. Oh! Oh, beautiful Christmas table. It would be more beautiful if we had a turkey, but we'll manage. Of course we will. See what a happy family your clerk has on only 15 shillings a week? Tiny Tim. I didn't know he was sick and a cripple. Mr. Scrooge. I give you Mr. Scrooge, the founder of the feast. The founder of the feast, indeed. I wish I had him here. I'd give him a piece of my mind to feast upon. <laughs> Dear, it's Christmas Day. It should be Christmas Day, I'm sure, when one drinks the health of such an odious, stingy, hard, unfeeling man as Mr. Scrooge. My dear, it's Christmas. Very well. I'll drink his health for your sake, and because it's Christmas. Long life to him. A Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. A, a Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas and a Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. God bless us, everyone. Tell me, Tiny Tim, will he live? I see a vacant seat and a little crutch without an owner. No, no. Say he will be spared. My life on a globe is very brief. It ends tonight. Tonight? 
The time is drawing near for me to go and for your third visitor to appear. I am in the presence of the ghost of Christmas yet to come. Ghost of the future, I fear you more than any specter I have seen. But lead on, I want to know. A young man today who asked after you, Mr. Scrooge's nephew, whom I scarcely know. I told him about Tiny Tim, and he said, I'm heartily sorry for you and your good wife. By the by, how he ever knew that, I don't know. Knew what, dear? That you were a good wife. Oh, everyone knows that. And he said, if I can be of any service to you at any time, pray come to me. He's rather unlike his old Uncle Scrooge, isn't he? You must torment me. Be quick. Take me to what else you have to show. I don't know much about it either. I only know he's dead. When did he die? Last night, I believe. What had he done with his money? I haven't heard. But he'll have no use for it where he's going. <laughs> it's likely to be a cheap funeral. For upon my life, I don't know anyone to go to it. Suppose we make up a party and uh, volunteer. When I come to think of it, I'm not at all sure that I wasn't his most particular friend. For we used to stop and speak whenever we met. I don't mind going to his funeral if lunch is provided. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what man they are speaking of. Who is it that lies dead? Assure me, I yet may change the shadows you have shown me. I will honor Christmas in my heart and try to keep it all the year. Tell me I may sponge away the writing on this stone. Marley! Marley, Jacob Marley! Heaven and Christmas time be praised for this. I will live in the past, the present, and the future. The spirit of all three shall thrive within me. <laughs> boy, oh boy! Yes, sir? What's today? What, sir? What's today, my fine fellow? Today? My Christmas day, sir. It's still Christmas? And I haven't blessed it. <laughs> for a man who had been out of practice for years, Scrooge gave a most illustrious laugh, the father of a long line of brilliant laughs. <laughs> <laughs> and Scrooge dressed himself all in his best, and at last got out into the streets, wishing everyone he met a Merry Christmas. Mr. Fred, come in, come Fred. in. Have you room at your table for some friends? Oh, you're very welcome, Mr. Fred, sir. And you too, ma'am. I only hope that our lowly feast is to your liking. Now, don't fret about provisions. We've brought plenty for all. <laughs> Merry oh, Christmas, Bob. Mr. Scrooge. And Mrs. Cratchit, for you. Mr. Yes. Scrooge. My dear, that's for you. Darling, for you. For me? And you, sir. Oh, Mr. Scrooge, I don't know how we can ever thank you. Don't. 
and I'm going to raise your salary and help your large family in every way possible. And Tiny Tim, <laughs> I saw a friend of mine at church just a little while ago, a famous surgeon. You and I are going to see him tomorrow, and he's going to be your friend, too. Mr. Scrooge! <laughs> Scrooge won his word. He did it all and infinitely more. And to tiny Tim, who did not die, he was a second father. Scrooge had no further dealings with ghosts, but it was always said that he knew how to keep Christmas well, if any man alive possessed the knowledge. May it truly be said of us, and all of us. And so, as tiny Tim observed, God bless us, everyone.